Hi everyone. Hey guys. A little bit dark here, getting already. <laughs> they still can see something. Yeah. <laughs> Today we're gonna answer one of your questions. Actually, it's a question that comes quite often. I um, we get asked a lot, and I see it very often. And um, this time the question comes from one of our members. Uh, that's Rina, nineteen sixty one. And uh, she actually has two questions. We'll see how the video goes, and we may answer the <laughs> second one. <laughs> or we'll make um, a separate. But the the first one is literally like, um, how did both of you know? That means that we are twin flames. Uh, did one tell the other? I have known for years, and yet still not able to tell to tell my twin uh, what we are together. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can tell from our own experience. We had zero clue for the people who are new here. Um, we have uh, zero clue. We had mm -hmm. uh, no clue who we are. And I mean, we still are learning who we are, but we learn a bunch of things already. But back then, when we first met and then we went to live together and stuff, we were still not in the twin flame thing. No. We were just not. We had no clue about the existence of twin flames or what. I mean, in this <laughs> embodiment. I will keep. Um, no, I'm gonna say now, otherwise I'll forget. But I keep on thinking about this that uh, one of the best replacements for the label twin flame is um, to meet someone or know the existence of someone, to feel it in the gut, that there is someone here on earth, just one person, that can fully understand you and know exactly who you are. This is the proper replacement for the label to implant. Mm -hmm. That's it. So that's what happened with the two of us. Yep. Uh, so we were already, we've told this story before, but we're just going to briefly For the new say, people, I don't think they know the new people. Yes. Uh, we were already physically together for about a year and um, I think it was even less than a year and we have known each other <coughs> for three years uh, and then I came upon an article about Twin Flames I don't even know I don't remember the article uh, I just remember um, the actual happening um, that this article came upon and uh, by reading uh, what twin flames are, you know, all the symptoms and stuff like this, I was absolutely shocked because um, I could see the two of us in it like immediately. And uh, I didn't think about it, nothing. I just went straight to you and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, hey, I think that we are twin flames. And you're like, what, what is this? Like... Uh, Mm -hmm. um, I cannot. I understood it had to do something with uh, twins, soulmates, something related. But uh, I was fascinated, of mm -hmm. course. Because it, uh, it actually went deeper than soulmates. We knew about soulmates at that stage, but uh, we didn't uh, read anything about twin flames. I, because we didn't know what twin flames were yet, I had a suspicion that we are related with something about soulmates, but at the same time, uh, I know people that are my proper soulmate, mm -hmm. not uh, her. But then I was like, okay, I don't know. And it's different, right? Yeah, it's very different. It was something unexplainable. I understood that. And uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I want to uh, share I mean, the two of us, uh, how I actually answered to the last person who asked, asked me this question uh, on a personal message. Um, now, first of all, uh, we all need to stop comparing ourselves with others. Like, you are a unique case, uh, just like any others. Mm -hmm. uh, each yep. Twin Flame couple is unique on its own, uh, with its unique mission. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, um, we should not compare our story with the other people's story. Uh, so, what is valid for others might not be valid for us, and what is valid for us might not be valid for them. Mm -hmm. And 
we only say our experience to you and we put an example as well for you to understand what we are talking about. It's mm -hmm. not even for you to compare yourself with us because we know very well there, there are people out there that are comparing themselves to us and this is not, uh, it's not a good strategy because you will always feel uh, defects or things that are not okay within you. And if you look from a brighter side, another perspective that uh, you didn't check it out yet, you will see life totally different. You will actually see yourself quite abundant, uh, quite confident, and I don't know, other things that will pop out that only you know. Mm -hmm. And we have no clue about this. We don't know. And only you know. So just don't compare yourself with other people. Too. That's the most important first thing. Uh, and then the second thing is trust your Kundalini. Because uh, mm -hmm. she's your guide here. Um, and um, if you let her uh, deal with this, if you let her uh, guide in this game, let's <laughs> say so, um, you will always be the winner. And you will always know what to do and you will not really have inner questions because she will be the answer of all your questions. Mm. She's like God on earth. Well, Goddess. yes. Yeah. Our Kundalini teacher calls her Grace and it really resonates with us because uh, uh, Kundalini is really the Grace within us. It's uh, this uh, other level of love um, that she gives us the opportunity to experience. Interesting, because I almost don't hear anyone saying the word grace unless they are calling a woman's name grace. Mm -hmm. uh, the only place I have heard people saying this quite often is in the religion, because I was in the religion before. Mm -hmm. And people use this word a lot, and they use it for the Holy Spirit. And I have a suspicion the Holy Spirit there mm -hmm. is the Kundalini. It is. It's not... It is. Uh, okay. Uh, it is not to say that uh, the Holy Spirit is bad or something like this. I'm just saying that uh, there is Trinity everywhere. Okay, Each religion, each uh, uh, tribe has its own Trinity. And if we put it all together, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the Kundalini is more than the Holy Spirit or vice versa. It's just calling the same thing different names. That's all. That's exactly so. <laughs> Yeah. Now, there's a very thin line here, though, uh, something very important, because uh, it is uh, very often that we mistaken the voice of Kundalini uh, with the, the pursuits of the ego. Um, mm -hmm. We have all, also done this, <laughs> um, and that's how we know. Um, Stuff. So... Uh, Maybe sometimes you will really want from inside, like something is pushing you, that you really want to go and to tell your twin flame that you are twin flames. But does it really come from the voice of Kundalini or it is really your ego? Mm -hmm. Is it really a very deep desire that you just want to fulfill? Um, there is a way to tell and um, it is quite easy, but at the same time, uh, you may need to practice it a little bit uh, at the beginning because it really involves of letting go and hearing your inner voice, this actual voice of the Kundalini within you. So, If you are impatient and anxiety kicks in, usually this is not the Kundalini because mm -hmm. Kundalini uh, and grace in general, to me, it relates with uh, patience and love like... Mm -hmm. Mel it's more mellow. She is a older. She can also yeah, exactly. <laughs> but she starts like this mellow. Yes. We are the ones who don't listen and we misbehave. Uh, we make it complicated. Exactly, and then she takes over. Okay, because we are not taking over, so she takes over mm -hmm. and she drives our vehicle the way she wants. And mm -hmm. in order to avoid this, you need to listen to her and um, and understand her. That's what it is. If you don't know what Kunalini exactly feels like if you want a, a, the best comparison look at mother nature she's the best she starts mellow everything is beautiful and we don't listen to her we do whatever we want and then what happens with mother nature she starts to kick in she starts mm -hmm. to take over 
and uh, we miss we cannot even control nature we you have, know we also have a, a quite a bunch of videos about kundalini in the and description below every time we speak about kundalini i always put it there on the a playlist series so you can check it out and on the members videos you will also find even deeper of course uh <laughs> information if you're interested um you just need to join us so anyways how to hear this inner voice of the kundalini um it really involves uh some relaxation so if you just relax and this actually works with other questions as well it's not just with this specific question shall i tell my twin flame that we are twin flames uh, but it's a very good thing to practice with um, so if you try to relax uh, you know take your time find uh, half an hour maybe so that you can have the time to really relax for yourself uh, to be just on your own to have some uh, quietness and peace around you I don't recommend any music to use during this time because sometimes they put us on a specific vibe and you don't want this, you just want to hear yourself. So once you are relaxed, uh, ask the question that you want the answer to again. Ask it and uh, check out what sensation you get from it. You can even imagine uh that you have already done it that you are just telling your twin flame right now uh that you are twin flames and guess what you are going to get a feeling and depending on this feeling you will actually get your answer and if you focus uh, on it uh, quite often and uh, you are not waiting for the feelings you're just focusing and practicing and stuff, you also might get your message deeper in the dream. It's also possible yes. to be infused with it when you go to sleep. And you're not thinking about it. You're just uh, doing your thing. Mm -hmm. you, you let it go and then it comes in a dream. Bang. You know, yep. sometimes it's possible. So if you get a very light feeling once you are answering, you, uh, you're imagining all this, let's say you're visualizing more like, uh, if you get a very light feeling, about this then you have your answer the result will be fantastic most probably uh, but if you get some kind of a strange heavy feeling especially here in the stomach area uh, in the gut you know we we speak about this gut feeling we all know about it um, or it can be even heaviness in the heart um, if you are not uh, very much connected with the gut because they are such people mm -hmm. um you have your own uh, s signs and you will you will understand them i'm sure about this kundalini will make sure you understand them the gut feeling is gonna explain two things when it's uh, not okay either it's because the other person is not uh, ready or the kundalini mm -hmm. of the other person something is not okay or second, uh, maybe this is not really the one partner that you're looking for. Because sometimes, you know, we are desperate. We just want um, mm -hmm. to fulfill our heart quick, you know. But it's not like mm -hmm. this. Uh, just like making money, you, you cannot make it quick. And the both things are in the heart chakra. We because also had such experiences before. Exactly. Both greed and grief, you know. Like grief is also when you are feeling pain because someone... That you love went away so it's all related with the heart chakra mm -hmm. you're anxious to meet someone you just have to chill out it's not gonna come fast if you want it fast you're gonna be in trouble so take it easy exactly <laughs> yeah we were in i mean again don't compare yourself to us <laughs> we are just explaining as an example but we were in peace mm -hmm. relating regarding this exactly we really took our time we didn't rush we were communicating for about two years and then we actually met physically and then we took the uh, decision to um, get together and live together and then we moved out to be just the two of us so we really didn't rush things and that's one of our win-win uh, uh, things that we really followed yeah with the heart <laughs> I'm so glad, man. Me too.